Hey guys, what's up? I'm your host, Drew. And I'm your host, Daniel. Welcome to another weekend, to another episode of the Weekend Rundown. Uh, we're going to hop right into Today in History with uh, July 26th. That's the day we're going to do. And in 1847, Liberia proclaimed its independence. The Republic of Liberia proclaims its independence, formerly a colony of the American Colonization Society. Where in, is Liberia? It's in Africa. Okay. An organization created to return enslaved people to Africa. Oh, there it is. Liberia swiftly called upon the international community to recognize its sover- sovereignty. Sovereignty. sovereignty? Yes, yeah, sovereignty. God. Britain became the first nation to do so, but the United States didn't recognize Liberian independence until 1862. Yeah, we just decided, nah, that's that's not how it works. 1908, the FBI is founded. U.S. Attorney General Charles Bonaparte uh, creates a force of special agents within the Department of Justice, which eventually evolves into the Federal Bureau of Investigations, FBI. They're listening right now. Bonaparte frustrated at having to borrow secret service agents to investigate crimes resolved that he needed his own investigators initially unnamed bonaparte's force became the bureau of investigation boi in 1909 and then the fbi in 1935 all right so they were the boi back in the day um and he was actually the grand nephew of the french emperor which one, like Napoleon Bonaparte? Yep. Wow, that's nuts. Yeah. So clearly that's... I was saying that last name wrong there. Yeah. Well, once we found out, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah it's crazy. That's crazy. Um, Helen Mirren is born in 1945. Not really today. sure who she is. I'm not either, so I'm trying to figure out why she is relevant to... Should I look her up? What's her name? Well, I'm going to know a little bit about her, but her name's Helen Mirren. Okay. Um, Ilna Lydia Miranoff, later known as Helen Mirren, was born in London, England on this day. After beginning her career as a stage actress, Mirren went on to star in films like The Madness of King George in 94, Gosford Park in 2001, and The Queen in 2006. Bro. For which I know Mirren who this lady won is. the Oscar for Best Actress. So she won an Oscar. For no, Best bro, Actress. it's way more than that. I looked into it, and she is the only performer who's uh, achieved both the American and British Triple Crowns of Acting. Okay, so she's good. She's yeah, very good. dude, I looked her up, and she's uh, she's in a lot of movies, dude. A lot of movies. It says that she was in 1969's Age of Consent, which was her breakthrough movie role. It's kind of like a side note in here that it didn't want me to find, but we found Yeah, this it. is saying that her first movie role was The Long Good Friday is what made her the breakthrough, but maybe that's in America. Okay, so today in 1984, Ed Gein dies. Uh, his picture looks crazy. He's a madman, isn't he? He died at the age of 77 in the Mendota Mental Health Institute in Wisconsin. So he yeah. was crazy. He's a madman. Gein spent years quietly grave robbing and killing women in order to build a suit of human skin so that he could embody his mother. Oh, it was that guy. Ed Gein's gruesome hobby was discovered after a local woman went missing in 1957 and police searched his home. That's morbid as... Whoa, dude. 1957 is when they found him? Is that Buffalo Bob? That's Uh, gotta be who... That's gotta be what he's based on, right? Yeah. Like, that seems pretty Buffalo Bob-ish. Very. Um, 2009, Diane Schuler crashes on the Taconic Parkway. Um, Diane Schuler crashes while driving the wrong way on New York's Taconic Parkway, killing all but one passenger. After going on a weekend camping trip with her children and nieces, Diane packed up her minivan, prepared to make the trip back home. A few hours into the trip, witnesses reported seeing a minivan driving aggressively and another reported seeing a woman vomiting next to her minivan on the side of the road. The minivan eventually made it onto the Taconic Parkway, 
where it sped down the wrong way for roughly two miles, only stopping when it collided head-on with another car. Seven of the 11 people involved in the crash died. Sheesh. I heard most of them were in their car, too. Why is that name familiar? I just looked it up. It's literally just from that crash. That's it? That's all I could find. So is it like a mystery or some shit? Do we not know why she was vomiting and why she was like... So I guess she survived the crash, but then she killed herself. What? It says right here, it says Diane Schuler who she took... She was one of the ones that survived and wasn't going to tell us that? God, was it? It says Diane Schuler who took her own life and the lives of seven others after... Oh, n- no, that could just mean that she that, that Yours says that seven people died, right? Didn't your article say seven people died? Yeah. Okay, so the math there is seven people were the seven others and then took her own life. And that's how it's There was 11 worded. people it said in the accident. What? So it said there were 11 people in the accident. Seven of the 11 died. Yeah. And then in the accident, seven died, right? And yeah. this said who took her own life and seven others were the seven you said died. That's all I'm saying. To me, it's implied that she killed herself. Oh, no, they said eight of the minivan, eight of the people. I don't know what it said on my site. This said eight when I looked it up on this. The New York Times was implying that she took her own life. Yeah. Damn, super drunk with the kids in the car. Not a good look, man. Not a good look. So I think they're saying that she committed suicide with everybody in the car. Uh, maybe, but she um and she was like this is how it's going to happen, which is an awful way. Yeah, to do that. Yeah, not a good time. I mean, she couldn't even pick like a tree. <laughs> I don't I don't think she really like, did by that. herself. I think she tree. was just drunk, man. Yeah, think- I guess think that's it people don't do that when they're high no but they try to play it off like you're you fall asleep or some shit which ain't true i've never fell asleep while driving whether i was high or drunk or anything was that everything this day in history that, that was it one? yeah no that was the, that was the, the nice. full rundown that was a weird little ending to that this day in history that was a weird this day in history yeah I feel like they were a lot of no-name people, but I guess the people that I thought were no-name people turned out to be somebody's. Except for this lady. She was just a piece of shit. Yeah, for sure, dude. Um, So, do you have anything cool happen this weekend? I know we're doing this a little late here. Um, My wife went on a vacation. Oh, you got so, some alone time. Yeah, so I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to just grind out some games and put the kids to bed early. And just sleep a lot. <laughs> I fucking fell asleep, bro. It sucked. Like, I fell asleep. I slept, like, the whole time. <laughs> it was awful. Just I'm wasted, just going to... Wasted my whole, you know, like, night. Yep. Just trying to sleep. I wasn't trying to sleep is the thing. <laughs> So, yeah, no, nothing exciting happened. I was sleeping. Just not hearing stuff. Just not hearing your phone and just sleeping. <laughs> yeah, no. I think I set my alarm, too. Yeah? Because I knew I was going to fucking fall asleep. Well, shit like that happens, I guess. doesn't matter. I just hate power sometimes naps. Your, sometimes your body needs to, like, rest, you know? Well, I, I, I like, hate power naps because I heard, like, a sleep cycle takes, like, 70 to 90 minutes. And so then whenever I set my alarm, it wakes me up and I consciously have to snooze it. And then when I'm conscious and I fall back asleep for a couple minutes until my fucking snooze goes back off, it like restarts a sleep cycle. So it never really actually helps. Right. So I'm just always, I, you do that all night and fucking wake up tired. So whenever I fall asleep at six o'clock and I set my time, it kind of screws me like that. Yeah. Um, I mean... I get that. I like to take power naps mostly because uh, um, I like to, like, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like, I take power naps to supplement I'm already sleeping enough, you know. But how long are your power naps? 
Just like 15, 20 minutes. So you got to get, I got to be one. I just like it like that, dude. I don't know. I just think that that's better. It's <laughs> neuroscience. What do you mean? Yeah. Like neuroscience. That's, that's what the study and it's like bad for me. Yeah, scientists have realized that it's whenever you fall asleep, you start a sleep cycle, and a sleep cycle runs 70 to 95 minutes. So you got to sleep for an hour and a half every time? At least 70 minutes, yeah. That sucks. That's why you'll wake up more tired. Unless you sleep a whole hour? Unless you sleep for 70 to 95 minutes. So, yeah, it's basically just over an hour. So Yeah. That's weird. That's good to know, I guess. Imagine you sleep for fucking, like, 77 minutes and your sleep cycle was actually supposed to be like 79 and you wake up and you're just like oh i'm so fucking tired i was so close <laughs> you know? oh. so you make you, it 95 you think, you think your body would be like disrespected by two minutes <laughs> yeah it'd be like this is awful and you think it's worse cycle. than not sleeping at all mm-hmm. i don't know i think i don't think that's as bad as you think it is. <laughs> I think 95 minutes is what you need. The whole 90. Write it down. Book it. You're taking naps 95 minutes. The whole minutes. 95 minutes. I know says. we're adults and it's tough to sleep for 95 minutes, but if you love yourself, 95 minutes. 95. And don't hit the snooze button because when you hit the snooze button, you woke up, you fall back asleep in 95 minutes. I hate that snooze button, man. Fucking snooze. It's terrible. Fucking so what happened for your weekend? Um... I did um, a comedy show and I went to a comedy show in the same night. That was cool on Friday. Was that the? What's like? What's the? What was the comedian that you saw? What was his name? Uh, Comrade Trip. And you did a show that same night. Yeah, uh, in St. Pete Beach, where he what, where he had performed. No, it was another place down the road. Did like he come and there. check it out? No, because he was busy like being a big comedian and like did you tell him you had a show um no i didn't know that i was gonna go on it wasn't like i knew i was gonna do it you know and how did you do uh there's only five people there dude and it was two twelve twenty five or something in the morning and one lady was like giggling a couple people like chuckled at like my punchlines but it was like it's hard when there's five people in the room and they're all like zombified out and one no, of them's your I friend can't. you know what i'm saying recording you who's heard all your jokes you right. know, like one time he laughed because no one laughed at my joke that like, you know, my Tom Brady joke. That joke's yeah. not a bad joke. And nobody no, even you got need it. A room. You need a room. Nobody people. even got it, bro. Five people isn't enough. It, I mean, it is. You got to go up there and do it. I mean, yeah, you got to go do it. But I'm just saying. And I was like trying to, to like, I was like riffing laughs. it a little bit, you know, like just making stuff up and going off other things and going off script a little bit like getting a couple giggles and stuff, but it was just rough. And, um, I wanted to leave a lot, but I just reminded myself, don't leave. Just stay, just stay, just finish this yeah, show. Just finish it up. Fuck it. Yeah. And I You're got not that. I can see those five people ever again. Oh, the one of well, us, my one, buddy. But... And the other guy, one of the other guys was, um, remember the cat guy at my, um, Oh God. Yeah. Did he go up? Yeah. Don't, was don't he hate. there with you? Don't hate. <laughs> yeah. I'm not hating, I'm just... You didn't like his cat performance. He was not a cat performer this time. He swallowed a sword. That's much cooler. It was metal. Why didn't he do that? Well, I don't know why he didn't do that, but the problem is that this time when he was doing it, the club owner came in two times during the middle of his set and told him to swallow the sword again. Yeah, no, that's some dope shit. Yeah, but he like actually had jokes to tell and stuff, and he kept interrupting him. Oh, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was funny. He had a, a, he had some like good content, but I just didn't like the whole cat gimmick. Yeah, well, that was just a thing he was trying to guess, and uh, I found out from him that he does like clean comedian stuff at colleges and makes like De, De Niro. And yeah. I saw I saw a video of him juggling on the race field like uh, pregame and like during the seventh inning stretch. Yeah, I mean, he definitely. I mean, but all of like all of his comment with comment or like I'm sorry. All of his content was related to like cats or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, that was the whole bit was a cat. It was bit. all cat related. And I mean Yeah, you had to like cats. I'm not even a cat person. Me either, bro. No. I'm not a cat person, I get it. Yeah. They're the only animal that like domesticated themselves. Yeah, they kinda suck. They like mimic babies' cries. Did you know that? Um, I knew that they 
tried to like make us feel bad, but I also know that they suck really bad. So I don't really want to talk about them on our podcast. He said, fuck the cats. You heard it first. Yeah. If you guys want to hear about cats on our podcast, go listen to a fucking podcast about cats. Yeah. Internet loves cats. Yeah. Not us. They love them, though. Yeah, maybe we won't be liked because I said that, but guess who doesn't give a shit about Dude, cats? More than not liked. People, like, hunt people down for that shit. Well. They're going to think you're a cat killer. I'm you not should a make cat it clear. Killer. There you go. You should make it clear. But I don't give a fuck about a cat. But if one was running across the road, no, you would. I would not run it over. But You would stop, exactly. Ac- a- absolutely, but if you we said. We don't hate cats. Choose right now. You keep your dog or 16 other people keep their cats. I'm keeping my dog. Guys, if you're liking and enjoying the episode and want us to make some real more great content for you, you could go down to the bottom and click support the show. It's either like a one-time $3 charge or you can give $3 every month and that would really help. Uh, We could just keep making some good episodes for you. If you can't do that, we uh, ask that you Go and rate us in whichever platform that you listen to and share us wherever you can. It means a lot to us, so we can keep making some great episodes for you guys, the listeners, the ones that uh, we do it for the most. Thank you. What if somebody said you keep your dog or 16 other people keep their dogs? Do I know these people? (laughs) Exactly. That's a fucking horrible, horrible analogy right there. All right. If they said keep... This dog or every other cat in the world is gone. I'd be like, sick, awesome. All right, how about they said that, but with dogs? I'd, Again. I'd shoot them in their face. <laughs> You're picking your dog. Come yeah. on, man. No, nah, bro, they're not allowed, they're not allowed to yeah, make Your dog doesn't, dog. you can't compare a cat to a dog I will John that you already everyone. love. All right, well, then if they said this random dog over here, or this random cat over here, I'd be like, is it a kitten or a cat? There you go. Oh, and now there's a, okay, it's a kitten. It's how, a kitten, how, a, how old kitten is the dog? and an eight-year-old dog. How cute is eight-year-old dog? What kind of dog is it? Chihuahua. Like, is it missing teeth? And like, it has a dumb, dopey it's face? It's got at least one tooth <laughs> <laughs> on the bottom, <laughs> on its underbite. That'll be hard to, that'd be hard to choose. Because honestly, fuck them cats. <laughs> Wait, does the Chihuahua bite? Chihuahua bites. Oh, I can't take the Chihuahua. Chihuahua bites. I cat bites. What? Cats claw- claws <laughs> and bites. <laughs> it's already a curveball. <laughs> it's already a cat. <laughs> oh um, no! Well, the kitten. The kitten bites. You know what? I might just cute little bites, but they're gonna be mean. <laughs> He's getting vicious. They're sharp. Yeah, the cute bites turn into mean bites. Yeah. It's up to you, man. Which one are you keeping? You're going to kill a, kill a baby why cat? Do I, I, first of all, why do I have to kill old, one? Old chihuahua. You know dog. what? I'm going to tell him, you make the choice that I want. You're the know. one that started this whole thing. No, I just said if somebody made me choose. And we're making you choose. I don't need either of those animals. So you're going to euthanize them both? <laughs> I mean, if that's their choice. You heard it first. <laughs> Drew's euthanizing everybody's animals. That's not true at all. I just, they both bite me. I feel like that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. This got out of control quickly. Do you want to get a lawsuit? No, I'm not. That's, I'm, that's why I'm not going to euthanize people's pets. Not for the, <laughs> you know. Uh, I didn't say anyone was euthanizing a pet. I just said, don't make me choose my dog or anything else. Yeah, exactly. You're a dog. That's why. That was the whole point of it. Was that your dog versus a random cat? Obviously, <laughs> is never going to be a good example. Because of cats are terrible. That yes. was my point. My point exactly. All right. Do you got an article? I have so many articles. So many. Yep. <laughs> well, you better pick three. Well, we're going to start with the weirdest news. Which, actually, I think it's good news. Um, it's that Bronny James is stable and out of ICU following his cardiac arrest. I think the biggest question now is what does LeBron James do? Does he continue to play basketball in anticipation of Bronny James playing in the NBA? Does Bronny James even get to the NBA now? Or does LeBron James just decide I'm hanging the shoes up to help my son because he's has some sort of cardiac issue? 
All they basically said was that, like, oh, he had a cardiac arrest and um, medical staff was able to treat him and he's in the hospital and now he's in stable condition and he no longer needs to be in the ICU. We respect that you have privacy for the James family. I have no privacy for them. I want to know everything right now. Please. I mean, I think it's crazy. Open like, up. How, is, how old is this kid again? He's like he's 18. 18. 18, cardiac arrest. I mean, it's not a good sign for, for a future in the NBA. I'm not saying it's impossible. No, it's not not impossible. But that's like a a bad like recipe like moving forward, man. Yeah. It's like cardiac arrest caused up to forty. I'm sorry, four hundred fifty thousand deaths a year in the U.S. alone. <laughs> when I saw it, I didn't even believe it. It's different from a heart attack, which occurs because of an artery artery, artery blockage. Uh, this is like just a thing where like your heart just stops. Yeah. I saw it on like a meme or some shit. It looked like a meme. So I was like, See, this I told isn't you, real. bro. It says Damar Hamlin, prayers to Bronny and the James family as well. Here for you guys like you have been for me my entire process. See, Damar Hamlin though, his was different. He, he got have, hit. Yeah, he didn't have like a heart failure because like something happened in his body. His heart failure happened because he got hit at like the perfect angle. Well, wasn't it like back in the 80s or some shit or 70s when like they're really tall basketball players they didn't know why they just dropped dead and that was probably just cardiac arrest because they're so big yeah you're running around like that your body's like stop just i mean i don't remember when that was like an epidemic if that was an epidemic in the nba then they they definitely swept it under the rug I saw some basketball thing about it where it was just like not they didn't always die but a lot of them were it's going down, man. I feel like it's usually college kids that I see in basketball that it happens to. Probably at this stage because they're probably a lot more athletic and have better trainers than they did in the 80s. You they know? probably don't understand their bodies like the other athletes do. You know, everyone wants to be Kobe. Yeah. Some people are and work Griffin. super hard. Yeah. It's like, and not everyone can be Steph Curry, bro. He's Some people are Shaq, you know. And you need to just eat a cheeseburger and watch a movie, bro. That's it. That's what you're going to do to prepare for this next game. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, I'm just glad that I'm just glad the kid's all okay, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. It's you're scary. If, like, what, like, you're a tall person. You're not, like, overly stupidly tall. And I don't think I'm overly stupidly tall, but I think I'm right at the cusp of it. And I think, like, any of people taller than us, like, I feel for them when they have problems in their body, you know? It's like, I get it. Yeah. My knees already hurt. My joints already hurt. Well, I mean, hurt. you got to think how much pressure is on this kid. To be the best? To be the dad. absolute best. That's not fair, dude. You know, when he runs, I know, but he, I mean, he does it to himself, I'm sure. Like, you got to think whenever he's running, whenever he feels his heart absolutely just pounding out of his chest, and he's like, I need to take a break. He doesn't. He, all he has to think is like, would my dad take a break? Well, your dad's a physical specimen. Right. So your mom's your anyone, mom's genes could have honestly mucked you up. You don't know exactly. I don't think anyone can compare to him like in this day and age right now. Um. So yeah, you wish him the best, but I hope in the future he doesn't. If he push himself or whatever it is that caused this issue, you know. Yeah, man. I just I just hope he's gonna be okay. That's all I'm trying to say. That's pretty much it for that article, though. I just wanted to bring that up because I feel like it's the the news, you know? It's definitely top of the news today. Yeah, dude. So what else you got? All right, so I got a man that went temporary bl- temporarily blind while attempting a 100-hour crying marathon. A Nigerian man uh, who's also a comedian and a content creator allegedly lost his sight for about 45 minutes after crying for hours in an attempt to cry for 100 hours. So this man cried himself blind? And set a world record for the longest time crying. You guys, you know now it's it's not touching yourself that makes you blind. No, nope, 45 minutes of crying and it'll, it'll fight. Or no, he lost it for 45 minutes. Hold on, how long was he? He probably crying? kept crying. Um, Tembu Daniel, who Oof. goes by 237 Town Crier <laughs> on Instagram. Recently lived up to his nickname by attempting a rather unusual world record, crying continuously for 100 hours. 
The young Nigerian began his cryathon on July 9th, but was forced to suspend his crying only six hours later due to some unforeseen side effects. Apparently, forcing himself to cry for hours nonstop caused Daniel to experience headaches, puffed eyes, and a generally swollen face. Ugh. However, the most worrying symptom was partial blindness, which he alleged, which allegedly lasted for about 45 minutes. His face does look very poofy there. It is a poofy looking face. And he only got six hours. I had Man, to re- strategize and reduce my wailing, the online entertainer told the BBC, adding that he didn't want to let his speed bump stop him from achieving his goal. Wow. However, it's unclear whether he actually completed the 100 hours of continuous crying, as the few clips of the attempt posted on Instagram show the timer at only 2 hours and 9 minutes and at 5 hours and 54 minutes, respectively. The African Taiwan crier posted a poster of his record attempt on Instagram earlier this month, which featured the Guinness records. In reality, he never bothered contacting Guinness about his unusual crime marathon. Wow. And perhaps it was the be- for the best, as the famous organization actually reacted to his record attempt, clarifying that they wouldn't have monitored such a record attempt anyway. <laughs> They're like, sorry, we wouldn't have done that for you. Just to quell some recent rumors, we wouldn't have even monitored a record for the longest crying marathon, Guinness tweeted. Just trying to fake it till you make it. Yep. But he got some attention for it. And he was blind for a minute. Which seems silly, but also fun. We now know a way a human can make himself partially blind. Yeah. It's a power we have. By crying too much. That was yeah. pretty stupid. It is pretty stupid. People do stupid things we've, we're learning on this show. People do lots of stupid things. A lot of stupid things. I um I got a pretty st- a stupid thing this person did on my next article, if you don't have anything else on that one. Uh, that one's all finished up. <laughs> so this is a, a girl keeps cutting the power for her entire home village to meet her secret lover under the cover of darkness. She can't do a corner of the village. It's got to be the whole village because she's a young girl from the Indian state of Bihar. Ooh, I don't know if I said that right. Mm. Uh, she keeps uh, cutting the power for the entire village so she can meet a boy from a rival village without anyone seeing them together. I mean, there's a good chance that Some, all the power runs on like one switch. Somebody knows now. It says, yeah, probably. It says the people of Bita, a village in Bihar's West Kampahara district, Wow, I suck. Had been on edge for over a week due to the unusual power outages that seemed to occur almost every night. The total darkness created perfect opportunities for thieves. So people appealed to the electric company to fix everything, basically. Uh, But the representatives had no uh, problem because they didn't have any reports of an infrastructure issue. They didn't know what was causing it. How cool would it have been if, like, she was meeting somebody of a rival village, and then someone from a third village found out about it and, like, blackmailed them. And it's like, hey, like, we're over here, like, we won't tell anybody, but you got to give us all your town's water. Everything. Because water's hard to come by here. And you give us all your food. <laughs> right. It says uh, some of the locals stood and watched and caught the young couple meeting under a cover of darkness. It turned out that a local girl... Perteri Kumari had fallen in love with, oh, fuck, Ramju, Ram, Raju Kumar, a young man from a rival village. Damn, sounded, dude. Sounded decent. Uh, t- yeah, after the third stutter. Uh, she kept cutting the power to the whole village just so that she can continue her secret love affair. She went to the extremes. Would so the only re- the only reason uh, they even found out was because when she'd cut off the power, a bunch of people were stealing shit. Oh, damn. Yeah. She so, got narked. Yeah. Well, because they were like, hey, we're getting a lot of thefts. So they had to find out why it was going. Bye bye. Nobody cared until people started. To see. see, that's the difference. 
Damn, dude. It says a viral video has been uh, found of the Indian people, uh, the social media um, kind of like yelling at her and the young boy like tried to defend her and like random people like tried to beat him with like some land landed a few stick blows on him. Oh, my God. Yeah. Jeez. It says he managed to get away and then took his revenge on the assailants with the help of friends from his own village. Took revenge. And it says this Bro. video is age restricted on YouTube. Bro, they <laughs> are gangsters over there. I swear <laughs> to God. In the end, in order to avoid further violence and power outages, the the people of the two villages decided that the young couple should marry. So their wedding was made official at a local temple. Dude, they're like, how do we how do we stop the straight gang violence? Just let them get married. I'm telling you, if you thought your upbringing was tough, and you're not from fucking Africa or India or India. That's where this was, India. India, right? yeah. Well, either one. Pretty, b- both pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, go fuck yourself. Seriously, like, I used to shit. think. I used to think like, oh man, we're lower middle class, bro. When I, you get beat that's... because you're from a rival village, <laughs> fucking rival village. Why'd they beat you? Not like like here. It's like oh. They beat me because I was from the other neighborhood. But Miss Connie was nice. She ran them off. No, no one's helping you from the rival fucking village. No, they're Your grandmother's hitting you too. Yeah. It's a rival village. This is like... The entire village. Yeah, this is a generational fucking problem. Right. Man. That is crazy. Yeah, I'm glad I don't uh, live over on over They do there. like public beatings over there. Like if you get caught stealing, I've seen like the whole neighborhoods like come out. Listen, man, their and crime just, rate, like, their crime rates are probably way farther me. down than ours. Yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't want to steal anything. You, um, you got anything else? I got one more and I think it is the best. Well, the most mind boggling one. I've got one that's like not really crazy weird news. It's like something I kind of wanted to talk about, but all right. Well, here, should I start? Yeah, do your do. All right. Uh, this one is a sailor and his dog miraculously rescued after two months adrift in the Pacific Ocean. Oh wait, this is that dude that just like randomly like he was like um deserted on his boat or some shit, right? And yeah, there's like a video of it. Um, an Australian sailor and his loyal dog were recently rescued after surviving two months adrift in the Pacific Ocean by eating raw fish and drinking rainwater. 54-year-old Tim Shattuck and his dog Bella left Mexico for French Polynesia back in April. But a few weeks into their 6,000-kilometer journey, Tim's catamaran was severely damaged in a storm. You and speak they were, up just a little bit, bro. And they were left with no way to sail. The storm also knocked out all the electronics, so the Sydney-based man had no way of contacting anyone for help or even cooking his supplies. Oh, couldn't even cook? Yep. The last time Shattuck saw dry land was in early May as he sailed out of the Sea of Cortez and into the Pacific during a full moon. Wow. He and his canine have been drifting in the Pacific ever since, taking shelter from the sun under a canopy, eating raw fish, and drinking rainwater. Damn, his dog is alive? The picture literally looks like something from a movie set. Literally looks like Castaway, man. Yeah. I've been through a very difficult ordeal at sea, and I'm just needing rest and good food because I've been alone at sea for a long time, Tim Shattuck said after being rescued. He's probably halfway insane. I've not had enough food for a long time. I have very good medicine. I'm being looked after very well. He's probably on fucking morphine when he's talking to him. (laughs) Asked why he set out in April from Mexico's Baja Peninsula to cross the Pacific Ocean to French Polynesia, the Australian sailor could not answer clearly. He just said he loved sailing and the people of the sea. As for how he spent his time during the two months at sea, he said he stayed occupied by fixing various things on the boat and occasionally going into the water for a swim. When he spotted a tuna boat's helicopter flying in the distance, it was the first sign of humans he had seen in three months. Luckily, the helicopter spotted him as well, and after the pilot threw him a drink, he flew away only to return with a speedboat from the Maria Delia fishing vessel. Nice. The two castaways were reportedly in a precarious state and in need of medical attention. Dang, man. He Bella, looks nuts, though. 
Bella, the catamaran's canine passenger, was an instant hit with the crew of the Maria Delia. Interestingly, Tim Shattuck had picked her up while traveling through Mexico, as despite his attempts to find her home, she kept following him everywhere. Even during their rescue, Bella refused to leave the boat before her human companion left. Tim Shattuck said that he is eager to return to his family in Australia, but mentioned that Bella would not be going with him. Oh, that's fucked. Instead, one of the crew members of the Maria Delia will adopt her. To the captain and fishing company that saved my life, I'm just so grateful. I'm alive, and I don't really think I'd make it, Shattuck said. After being found by chance more than 2,000 kilometers from the nearest coast, his gratitude is more than understandable. Dude, can I say a thing? I don't understand how... You don't take the dog with you if you didn't, you, 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 you were out there for three months. Like, so what I read was when I looked into it, cause I was like, there's gotta be a reason why I wouldn't take the dog. And it is that in Australia, you're not allowed to bring animals from certain com- countries. Mexico. And Mexico is one of those countries. And he found the dog while he was in Mexico. And took it on the boat with him. I'm sorry. They the should make an exception for a dude that had an animal he bonded with at sea. That like he probably would have died if not for that thing. Yeah. No. That's not cool. But he's like an Australian dude, so he's just like, yeah, you know, whatever. It's just I mean, an I'm animal. Just, yeah, it's an animal. We kill him all the time. Yeah, right. I'm like, gonna go I'm wrestle gonna go a kangaroo my, and eat some, a snake. Yeah, I have some kangaroos at home. I'm gonna fucking hang out with. That's fucked though, man. That just goes back to earlier, like how attached we are to our animals in these days. It like, said he didn't even want the dog. The dog these, just kept following These him. bushmen are just like, whatever. Yeah. He's like, dog kept following me, so I felt like I kept I had to keep it alive when we were on the boat. <laughs> I, I was mean, like, fuck, I, I let this thing on here? This is half just, my fucking just, water. Just, <laughs> just because he uh, doesn't treat it like, like we do here doesn't mean he didn't care about it. Right. He's like, that's, I told you to stay. That's pretty cool, I said, though. stay on the dock. That's pretty nuts, man. That's a... Sure is. I don't think I could make it that long and fucking see. I'd die probably. I like to think I could, and I'll say I could, but I don't know that I would. I right. wouldn't know until I did that. Was in that situation. Yeah, man. Two months, any or three months without seeing people, and two months without pa- like it's just, that's just a long time. I mean, just for us, like getting accustomed to like not having a phone would be tough. Yeah, dude. I try to like not use my phone for the first hour. I'm awake, and it's impossible. Yeah. Not using my phone during the podcast is probably one of the only times I don't use my phone, which is awesome. Yeah, I don't use mine. But we're technically on our computer, so same shit. Exactly, but it's for the podcast. So, uh, you want to hear my last article? We got one more. Let's hear it. So, all the shows that are impacted by the writer and actor's uh, strikes so far as of uh, eight days ago. Uh, You know about the writer and actor strike? Um, I heard there's this crazy thing going on about the 2023 Writers Guild of America strike. Um, how it like is messing up Hollywood. This happened before a long time ago. I don't know if you remember, like, I think it was when I was in high school or right after. I don't remember it, but yeah, it messed everything up. I read about this one a little bit. Yeah. So everything has pretty much gotten all messed up. You know what I'm saying? It says that. It upended Hollywood production plans uh, in 2023 or 2022, 2023 TV season coming to a close when the strike began. Shows were in seasons that weren't affected. But as the final episodes of the seasons were set to air, renewed shows were set to convene their writers rooms for upcoming seasons. And uh, this is where the effects are going to probably come into play here. I guess uh, this, the Rings of Power, which is an Amazon show. The season two was nearly done uh, when the strike, like, literally made it, you know what I'm saying, end, like, probably different. Um, House of the Dragon season two, um, they just started their production. That one is pretty much not related to that, so that one's good. Um, It's basically saying AMC shows like... Uh, the various Walking Dead shows, um, this interview with the Vampire show, those shows won't be going on. Uh, 1923 season two, which is on NBC, isn't going to go on until after the strike. Um, Abbott Elementary season three isn't going to go on. It's, gonna be a lot it's of basically just yeah, man, a lot of shows. 
No American Dad season 20. What? No American Horror Story season 12. Oh, man. No Andor season 2. What? No Big Mouth final season. Uh, how about The Mandalorian? Can we get another one of those? Blade, the movie that's been going on for so long, like the rehash of Blade, you know? That's being paused. The new Blade Runner movie's being paused. So many affected. Uh, Cobra Kai final season. Daredevil born again season. Uh, who cares about the daytime Emmy Awards? Duster, whatever that is. Emily in Paris season four. If you're a girl and you like whatever that is. I don't know why I'm typecasting it to just women, but I don't know what it is. That's probably why. Euphoria season three. Evil season four. Evil sounds metal. I kind of want to watch that show. FBI Most Wanted Season 4, Family Guy Season 22 on hold. Good Omen Season 2. There's a lot of shows, man. Hacks Season 3, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, The Hedge Knight. Uh, House of the Dragon Season 2. Interview with the Vampire Season 2. Jeopardy Season 39. Late Night Talk Shows aren't going to be on. That's nuts, man. Bro, it's literally, I think everything, I think everything, I think TV is going to stop. I think streaming is going to be the only thing. And sports. It's going to be killing it. Guys, we're going to say it right now. We promise during football season, we will not talk about football or fantasy football on our podcast. We're saying it now. As long as the Lions win, I will give an ode to them. Every podcast. Oh, yeah. I if the promise. Lions win, that's a different thing. But we're not going to have long-winded things. It's going to be a quick and out. Yeah, it can be quick and out. Um, Bro, this, like, list is sti- this list is still going on. Dude, so that just kind of reminded me that I was listening to this podcast. Saturday Night Live, bro, is pausing. That's nuts. But it's never paused, dude. I was listening to this podcast. And Stranger Things, about, no. I was talking about this movie script for this movie a tuck which is like a book or something like a that. a tuck yeah it's like a book or something like that but um so originally the person who agreed to to uh lead it and be the starring role was jim belushi okay and then he died before filming so then john candy decided he would take the role he died, right? Um, he died before filming while he had taken the role. I've heard of this. And then Chris Farley said he would take the role. And then he died while, or before filming while he was. And we know how he died. For the role. Yeah. So it's just, they've never made it since then. They just decided it's a cursed movie. They've decided the film is cursed. What's the screenplay? Can we find it? it? Should we read it, or is that scary? And it's a. It, I believe it's a book. I don't. I'm scared to read it. I, it. I hear it has nothing to do with like anything scary. They said like it's so not. How does how does the writer strike make you think of that? I don't know because it had something to do with like pop culture and this. You know what I think today. this. You know what I think the writer strike is opening up right now. What? Uh, basically, if there's no now is the time. If anyone wants want, to be an actor, if anyone wants to put out content online and make money, whenever oh, yeah. that stuff's down, now is the time to do it. And like. Like Daniel said, sure, like acting is one way, but I think if you want to be a cartoonist, make your own online cartoon and post it like ads for it on TikTok and put it on mm-hmm. YouTube. I mean, think if you were a freaking scab actor, like doing Blade, do you think they'd fucking pay you like they... Well, that's what the whole strike is about, is that like uh, the lowest paid person in Disney makes like 400 times less than what the CEO makes, you know what I'm saying? Um, and like... The argument that the Disney um, CEO is making is like, oh, back in the 70s and 80s in the writer strike, no one like even really had the grounds to stand on. And it's like, well, back then the lowest paid employee was making 25 times like less than what the CEO was making, not 400 times, you know. So the actors aren't even fighting for themselves. The actors are fighting for basically the writers and the low paid people. That's good. Yeah, the people like the stagehands, the it's basically it's basically the writers and the pe- screenplay people. Because say you and me write a screenplay and they buy it, and we're not known. 
They're going to buy it from us for like $80,000, and that movie's going to make them millions and millions of dollars, dude. Because yeah. they're going to have Ryan Gosling in it and fucking Ryan Reynolds, and they're going to be jerking each other off because our script is going to be some weird gay thing, and everyone's going to love it. And I'm not going to have gay stuff in my script. But I'm just saying, maybe not you and me, but maybe anyone can do whatever they want. stuff, <laughs> not gay stuff, all right? There's a big difference. Big difference. Big difference. Um, but my point is, is that like you write a script like Brokeback Mountain, like, I don't know who wrote that script, but like, I'm sure if it wasn't somebody who was like a well-known writer, they were like, here's $35,000. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? They pay those two actors to do it. They make a shitload of money off it from women. And then like they filmed it in like, on, in like Colorado mountainside for like $3 million or something. That's shit. why I got to deny them. They're like, we want this for 35. You say no. You do that Sylvester Stallone move, you know? Do it yourself. End up fucking making the movie by yourself, starring in it yourself, becoming a fucking famous actor. And still having the turtles. Being on a commercial where you're on Mount Rushmore, and I fucking see it every time I'm on YouTube. Oh, Adrian. <laughs> every time, dude. Uh, dude, you know, um, I talked about that ayahuasca retreat, um, and now my phone's always like, come to our retreat, sign your life away. Sign ayahuasca. <laughs> Dude, could you imagine if any other drug was like, we'll give it to you if you pay us a lot of money, but then you sign up for a cult? No one would do that. I feel like beer does it. Right? Like beer is just always like, oh, if you sign up for our program and get all of our extra points, you know? All you the old do school is... Marlboro Miles. Yeah, exactly. That's part of that cult life. <laughs> yeah, that is like, but that's like the secret cult life of like, they're smart enough to know like, if we get them dialed into the money savings and make them think they're saving money, even though our shit's overpriced, they'll be here forever. First you, packs free. The ayahuasca literally is like, you have to sign this uh, form that says you're part of our group for life. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. Oh, yeah. No, that sounds hairy. That's super cool. Am I'm, I allowed to leave? No, it sounds like I'm signing up for um, Scientology where they let me do ayahuasca one time. Yeah, no, I'm not joining your fucking weirdo group. Dude. Nah, bro, that's not, not what I'm about. I'm not drinking the punch. I don't want any punch. I'm not listening to the loudspeaker. No. I'm bringing a gun. Definitely bring in a gun. And I don't know if I'm allowed to take ayahuasca when I have a loaded pistol in my pocket, but we're going to try it. For sure. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't try the ayahuasca with the pistol in my pocket, but why not? You do you? Because I'm pretty sure you'd be tripping ball sack. Yeah, well, if somebody tried to take my wallet. Dude, like they do the toad licking thing. I'm pretty sure that you, give, you, you take all your belong. You like you go in with just like clothes. And well, they do like toad licking things in Mexico. Eesh. And so imagine you have to travel. So you're traveling to this place. You have to have a wallet. There's no way you don't have your fucking wallet with, with something on you. Right. And then you go to like this religious place to do this fucking toad licking thing. There's like 40 of you. You all fucking lick toads. There's two chaperones. And imagine if they just ran your pockets. Or imagine if the two chaperones well, got fucking robbed. That's how these and then resort, they robbed all of you. That's how this resort is. Like, they literally take all your belongings. Like, they could take your shit. Like, easy. Yeah. I mean, they could. Fuck that. I trust none of you. <laughs> you better, I, you, well, you can also, like, if you know someone cool, you can get, like, a weird, crazy shaman to, like, come over to your house and, like, hang out with you a couple times. And, like, the second or third time, they'll do it with you. And the shaman person knows how to make the ayahuasca, you know? Can't we just Google that shit? Uh, you need certain kinds of things. You need to do it a certain way. I'm not sure you can, but I, I don't know. I guess we could look into it. I know I can fucking Google how to make crack. I can yeah, but you might you might die if you do it wrong. I can make meth. Yeah, but you can make it, but it. do you want to die? Like, I want to actually take it. I want to do it the right way and not yeah, die. No, I mean, I would take it. I don't want to do meth or crack. Even no, though I I'm could not Google trying it. to do meth or crack. I'm just saying. Information is so readily available. It is, days. it is. But those like ancient practices of the forest are not readily available yet. They are getting there. They're getting everything there. finds its way online. I want to try. I want to try that. Um, it's like the. It's not really a mushroom, but it's like confused with the mushroom, and it's in the mushroom family. I think. Uh, it's the one that the Mario mushroom is. It's the like, red and white one. Yeah, it's like a real thing. 
Is it really? Yeah, and like um, I guess like it looks kind of tasty. I guess I guess <laughs> I don't think it's tasty. I mean, Mario does. I mean, it um, looks tasty. I'm but sure. um, that's why Mario is gets big is because he's tripping balls and thinks he's big. But uh, chip 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 yeah. Chip, yeah. Chip, yeah. Chip balls. <laughs> but <laughs> but the, fun, the funny thing is that um, so the reindeer, the caribou or whatever, where that thing grows in like Norway and Sweden, they're addicted to that shit. Like to the point where like the shamans who be taking that stuff and turn it into tea and drinking it whenever they go out of the the hut in the cold and go to pee the the fucking reindeer and shit can smell it and they'll come up and lick the pee because it's like still hallucinogenic like as you're peeing caribou and like so reindeer. the freaking so you're telling me that these mushrooms are so fucking good that everybody in that region loves them so much that they take so much of them that their pee actually tastes like it directly coming from their fucking I don't penis. know about that. And so that freaking caribou and deer, it's still so good <laughs> that they still want that shit. So they come and lick the pee before it hits the ground. I heard it on like Paul Stamets, I think was on like the Joe Rogan experience. And I heard him say that like, yeah, no, bro, for real. Like the, if the, that's not on your fucking bucket list, bro. It is to eat. I mean, it has to be. I mean, it has to be on everybody's. I want. Rice. I want those mushrooms. Like, there's. There doesn't seem like a poor review in the bunch. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, just fucking saying. Five out of five stars yeah. of the reindeers are looking pee. Exactly. <laughs> Interview the entire forest. Yeah, Everybody yeah. loves it. Well, uh, yeah. Literally, not like most things are like four out of five dentists agree. Like, no, five out of five reindeers agree. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, I don't really uh, have anything else, though, this episode, besides um, hoping one day a reindeer will lick the hallucinogenic pee that, uh, like out of my hut. Take a picture. <laughs> just, no, just snap a it picture. It didn't look the same as whenever I saw it. <laughs> it's actually a rabbit. It's, <laughs> That's not even, not even a rabbit. It's just like a dude dressed up with antlers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that was somebody I met at the reunion. What the fuck, Steve? <laughs> Uh yeah man but I think this episode uh we had some technical difficulties in the beginning but we got there we got there Yeah we got through it So uh yeah thanks for uh joining us for this episode of the weekend rundown I've been your host uh Drew and I'm your host Daniel and we hope you come back in for the next episode of the weekend rundown and we'll try to get it on time next week thanks guys Take care a rich man